Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today's tutorial is going to be my part two in my mini series of how to create a menu bar in NCurses. Uh, today's tutorial, well first off you should go check out last tutorial and some of my earlier tutorials because we'll be covering or we'll be using things that we've learned in previous tutorials so you should check those out first. But just as a quick recap, uh, in the previous tutorial we came up with a very specific solution um, where we created a menu bar with three menus, file, edit, and options. Um, but this code doesn't generalize well if we want to change one of the menu item texts or the menu texts or anything like that. We'd have to change a ton of code here in order to get it to work properly again. So what I'm going to do in this tutorial is kind of generalize our code and make it easier to just plug and play. Uh, with any different sort of menus, any number of menus, any number of menu texts or length of text in the menus. So that's what today is going to be about. So first off I just kind of want to go over some of the changes we're going to need to make, make to our code. First we're going to need to include a uh, new file. Um, you should create a new file called menu.h and you should include it in your main file. Um, and in my menu.h I've just created um, a basic header file uh, with a menu class and a menu bar class. Those are the two classes we'll be using to generalize our code. Um, so technically you should put these in two separate header files but just to make the tutorial easier I'm going to put them in one. And so that's kind of some setup uh, you'll want to do. That's the only thing that's really changed since the last tutorial. So now that you know that we're going to be using a menu bar and a menu we can kind of start talking about how we're going to break up this code. So looking at this step here we could say that this is sort of our initialization for our menu bar and our menu so we're initializing our menu bar to contain three menu items here and our menu bar has a window those are kind of what that's kind of what we know about our menu bar it's going to be in this window and it has these three menus so this is sort of our initialization phase so we'll say menu bar slash menu initialization initialization if I could just spell today <laughs> Um, then when we get down here to the while loop we kind of have um, something for our menu bar so our menu bar is going to be responsible for deciding how to display our menu so our menus are going to be responsible for responsible for remembering their menu text and their starting position and um, their trigger but uh, the menu bar is going to be responsible for actually assigning them that starting position and actually placing them in, in the window so our menu bar here is going to say, okay, well, I need to handle the trigger, so uh, check user input for triggers, essentially. So we want to see if our menu bar is going to check to see if it, uh, our user has pressed any of these triggers. Then within each of these cases, what we're kind of trying to do here is we're going to say, okay, our menu bar needs to decide select menu X in this case. So X is just being like a variable, you know, select whatever menu applies for this trigger. So that's kind of what we're doing in each of these uh, cases here. So I'll just kind of plop that in there. Then when we get down to this default case, this is sort of like we're resetting all of our menus. Uh, we're resetting them to just blank. So uh, menu bar, reset all menus. So that's kind of how I would break up this code if I were to you know, look at it and try and decide, okay, what are the chunks here that are repeated? and and that can be abstracted away and generalized. So now looking at that we can kind of start to understand what what does each of our classes need to to hold. So let's start with our menu. So our menu, each of our menu items is going to have three things. It's going to have a starting position, um, some text, and a trigger. So let's go to our menu.h file and let's give it those values. So I'm just going to make everything public for the tutorial. You should probably do private and use getters and setters but just to keep the tutorial shorter I'm going to make them private or public variables so each menu is going to have a start x um, variable to represent okay I'm starting my menu starts at position 2 for instance um, then each menu is also going to have some text I'm just going to use a string because I'm more familiar with strings I know how to work with them um, and I like their convenience functions they have they come with and each menu is also going to have a trigger. So now looking at our menu uh, bar initialization stage, uh, each menu bar is going to have a window um, and some menus that it, that it has. So 
we're going to need some variables for those. So we'll create um, a member variable for uh, a window. So we'll do window star win. And then we're also going to have an array of menus um, that we represent. And we're also going to have a variable to store the number of menus that we have. Um, just a convenience thing makes uh, so we don't have to calculate how many menus, we don't have to check how many menus we have every time, essentially. Um, so, with that all in mind, we can start actually creating some um, constructors for these classes. So, looking at this, our constructor, you'd think that we'd want to have um, the start x as part of the menu constructor, but actually we're going to let the menu bar decide what the start x is for every menu. Because the menu, you know, if we put file first, it's position 2, but if we put file second, it's position 7. So we want the menu bar to decide, okay, we're going to place each of these menus at position whatever. So our menu bar constructor is actually just going to have the text, or sorry, the menu constructor is just going to have the text that represents that menu, so text, and the trigger that, um, the, the trigger that triggers the menu, or selects the menu, essentially. So we'll set this text equal to text, and this trigger equal to trigger. So that's our menu constructor. Now looking at our menu bar, we're going to initialize it with the window, we're going to initialize it with an array of menus, and we're going to also initialize it with the number of menus, just to make it a little easier so we don't have to calculate how many menus there are. So what we'll do here is we'll create a constructor again, and we'll have it take as parameters a window, oops, um, a window and a, an array of menus and a um, number of menus like that. So let's just get this boilerplate code out of the way. This menus equals menus. This num menus equals num menus. Okay. So what we've done here essentially is just the bare minimum to get our two classes working. But with that, we can actually start to write some code in our main file, um, finally. So uh, first thing we'll do is we're going to create an actual array of menus. So I know how many menus we're going to have. We're going to have three. Um, so I can create an array of menus here um, and initialize three menus, or our three menus. So our first menu is, has the text file, and it has the trigger F. Our second menu has the text edit and the trigger E. And our third and final menu has the text options and the trigger O. Um, so there we go. So now those are our menus. Um, we've initialized those. They're all set. And now let's actually create our menu bar. So our menu bar takes first, um, it takes a window. So hold on, let me write that. So we'll just pass it our window that we created up here. Then we'll pass it our menus. And then we'll tell it the number of menus, um, like that. So now that we've done that, let's. Um, Let's just make sure this code compiles and make sure that everything's working properly. Okay, perfect, it still compiles. Right now, the code hasn't changed at all because these the menu bar and menus don't do anything and we still have all the original code. So now let's let's change that. Let's um, get rid of this first in this in, uh, initialization phase here. So if we get rid of this, we'll realize we'll run into a certain problem here. So now if we re remake and rerun this, you'll see that at this start we don't get any menus which is a problem and that's because we haven't actually created a draw function for our menu bar so a draw function is what's going to be actually drawing the menus on the window and that's basically what that first step did with the move w print w's so that brings us back to our menu bar class and we have to create a draw function we're just going to call it draw and it's going to take no um, parameters and it's going to return nothing and um, also, what we need to do is we need to actually initialize our menus with start x values. So, the place you're going to do the initialization of the start x for the menus is actually in the uh, constructor because as we add these menus, um, we can actually just like calculate where they're supposed to start and everything. Um, so, if we go back to our constructor here, we can create a little for loop, um, and we'll just do for int i equals zero, i is less than the number of menus. I plus plus like that. Then what we're also going to need is um, a variable just to hold the current position um, that we should be printing our menu at. So 
the way that we can actually calculate the current position is we want to start out at position 2 because if we go back to our main um, and we press button here so you'll see that our starting position is at position 2 that's what this is position 2 right there and we you can see that when we have you know every time we print file we print it at position 2 so that's our starting position so in this for loop what we want to say is okay we want to say this menus I um, dot start X is equal to the current position like so so what this will do is it'll assign the first menu equal to position 2 which is correct we want file to be at position 2 then after that we have to calculate the next current position so our next current position should be equal to our current position plus the text of the menu plus one so we have that little buffer there so we'll do um, this menus i dot text dot length that's a lot of code there um, plus one so that's the length of the menu plus the extra one so we get that buffer there um, and then so what this will do is it'll go back around and it will um, actually set the position for each of the menus so now that we've done that in our draw function we can create another for loop that's very similar to this one like so like that get rid of this middle bit here um, so in this for loop what we actually want to do is actually print the menu out so that's going to be with a move w print w just like how we did over here so we'll create a move w print w statement and we'll print to our window uh, the y value is always going to be zero like we saw before we always start out at position zero because that's where our menu bar is um, and then for the start x what we're going to do is just to make the code a little cleaner I'll uh, add a little variable up here start x and get the current menus start x value like so and then we'll have that be our start x or our uh, x position for uh, to move to when we print then I'll also create a little um, std string text this menus i dot text so makes the code a little cleaner here so what we have to do is text dot c string because uh, it doesn't take a strain it takes a c string so you can convert that string to a c string using this function here so essentially what this function does is it goes through and it says okay um, get the start x of the menu get the text of the menu and then print at that position so with all that done we can actually go up here after our menu bar uh, initialization and we want to do an initial draw kind of like we had before with our initialization um, where we had this up top um, originally so now if we make and run this new code you'll see that it prints it out at the beginning like we expect it to um, because we now have this draw function here now uh, the next thing we're going to do is we have to write a function to actually handle these triggers so the way we're going to go about handling the triggers um, is by creating a function or, or sorry a method in our menu bar class called nicely enough handle triggers or handle we'll say handle trigger because um, it'll be one trigger at a time it's handling and we'll have it take a char which will be the the trigger that you know the character the user actually pressed uh, sorry this this tutorial might be a little bit longer I might cut some stuff out in post but we'll see um, so again we'll have a very similar for loop here um, that we will use to loop through each of the menu items and uh, do a little if statement against its um, trigger so for each menu item we want to check if our trigger is equal to this menu um, dot trigger so if our if the trigger that we're passed matches any of the menus triggers what we'll do is we'll create a little function or sorry a little variable called selected menu um, and we can set selected menu equal to the current index so that'll say okay um, because these triggers match we want to select menu I and just to make sure that we're um, initializing that selected menu to something so it doesn't end up at zero to start we'll do selected menu equal to negative one up in the constructor so now that we have the menu selected 
what we can do is we can say, okay, within our draw function, we want to check to see if this current menu is selected. So if um, selected menu is equal to I, so if our selected menu is the current menu we're, we're drawing, we want to do W attru on, attra on for our window and set the attribute A standout, like so. And then we'll throw a um, W attra off down here. That does not need an if statement because if we don't have the attribute on, it just does nothing. So that's fine there. So with these two functions, we can now actually get rid of all of this code here that we had from before. So if we get rid of this code here, we can replace it with two our two new functions where we say menu bar um, dot handle trigger, and we'll pass it our um, the, the input from the user, and then menu bar dot draw. So essentially, what's going on is um, we draw the menu to start with because we're drawing it. Um, before the user has pressed anything, it doesn't matter if we handle the trigger, it'll just draw the menus like so. Then when we get in here, um, we wait for the user to press, and then when they do press it, we handle the trigger, which will highlight one of the menus, essentially. Um, and then once we get to the draw function, it knows which of the menus to highlight when it outputs. So let's just make sure this code actually works. We'll make it run, and if we hit F, file highlights. If we hit E, edit highlights. If we hit O, options highlights and we have the exact same result as before but now the code is much more easy to first off look at the codes a lot easier to look at it's easier to understand just by looking at okay we created a menu bar with these menus they have these triggers and we're gonna handle the trigger and draw the menu essentially but not only that we can easily change these menu um, text so if I wanted to make the first one terminal and change the trigger to T we, that's the only line of code we have to change and now it, it'll perfectly calculate the start X of each of the menus it'll handle the tr triggers correctly still um, and we could add another menu if we wanted to so if you want to add a fourth menu we could say um, I don't know, view and set it to V for a trigger um, and then we'll pass it sorry we have to change the number of uh, menus here as well but that's not that much code so we make it and run it again you'll see we're able to add menus now the only thing we're not doing and something you would really need to do is we're not checking to see if we're overflowing this bar so we should ideally if this was like a really you know a full project where we were going all out with it we should be calculating to see if we're we've exceeded the length of the the window but for simple purposes this works and you can expand on it if you want to so I hope this tutorial has made sense and helped you kind of understand how to, you know, the development process and end curses. This is typically how I will go about um, working on a project. You know, I come up with a naive solution and I kind of break it apart into pieces and build it back up in a way that's more general um, and that works for any situation. Um, so I hope this has been helpful. Um, I think what I'll do in the next tutorial um, is I'll actually show you how to create you know menu items so for instance when you highlight one of these menus you have like a little bar that or a little box that pops up here with some menu items in it that can be selected um, that'll be in the next tutorial but um, I hope you guys like this I hope this tutorial isn't too too long um, please comment rate and subscribe and uh, can't wait to see you guys in the next one